Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about history of Africa. Before starting this video like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates. Africa's history begins in East Africa with the appearance of hominids, archaic humans, and anatomically modern humans, Homo sapiens, at least 200, 000 years ago, and continues unbroken to the present day as a patchwork of different and politically emerging nation-states. Ancient Egypt was the birthplace of recorded history, followed by Nubia, the Sahel, the Maghreb, and the Horn of Africa. Following the desertification of the Sahara, North African history became intertwined with that of the Middle East and Southern Europe, while Bantu expansion swept across much of the sub-Saharan continent in waves between 1000 BC and 1 AD, creating linguistic commonality across much of the central and southern continent. Islam moved west from Arabia to Egypt during the Middle Ages. Reaching the Maghreb and the Sahel, the Ajuran Empire, Bachwizi Empire, DMT, Adal Sultanate, Alodia, Warsangali Sultanate, Buganda Kingdom, Kingdom of NRI, Nak Culture, Mali Empire, Bono State, Songhai Empire, Benin Empire, Oyo Empire, Kingdom of Lunda, Punuyaka, Ashanti Empire, Ghana Empire, Masi Kingdoms, Motapa Empire, Kingdom of Mapungubwe, Kingdom of Sine, Kingdom of Sen Africa had up to 10, 000 independent states and autonomous groups with diverse languages and customs at its peak, prior to European conquest. Europeans began to participate in the slave trade in the late 15th century, this includes the Triangle Trade, in which the Portuguese obtained slaves first through trade and then by force as part of the Atlantic slave trade, enslaved people from West, Central, and Southern Africa were transferred to other countries, following that. During the Scramble for Africa, 1881 to 1914, European colonization of Africa grew fast from roughly 10%, 1870, to over 90%, 1914, decolonization took place across the continent following wars for independence in many parts of the continent, as well as a weakened Europe following World War II, 1939 to 1945, culminating in the 1960 year of Africa. Oral history recording, historical linguistics, archaeology, and genetics have all played a role in the rediscovery of ancient African civilizations. Africa is where the earliest hominids appeared. The early hominid skull morphology was comparable to that of the gorilla and chimpanzee, both large apes that originated in Africa, but the hominids had chosen a bipedal movement that liberated their hands. According to paleontology, this provided them with a significant advantage, allowing them to dwell in both forested and open savanna areas at a period when Africa was drying up and the savanna was encroaching on forested areas. This would have happened 10 to 5 million years ago, but these statements are debatable because biologists and geneticists believe humans first appeared somewhere between 70 and 200,000 years ago. Several Australopithecine hominid species had evolved over southern, eastern, and central Africa by 4 million years ago. They were both tool users and tool producers. They were omnivores who scavenged for meat. Primitive stone tools were originally employed to scavenge kills made by other predators and to extract carrion and marrow from their bones some 3.3 million years ago. Homo habilis was probably not capable of competing with huge predators and was still more prey than hunter when it came to hunting. H. Habilis most likely stole eggs from nests and could have caught small wildlife and weakened larger prey, cubs and older animals. Olduin was assigned to the tools. Homo orgaster first appears in the fossil record in Africa around 1.8 million years ago. Homo erectus developed 1.5 million years ago from Homo orgaster. Like H. habilis, some of the earliest representatives of this species had small brains and used crude stone tools. The brain grew in size through time, and H. erectus eventually created the Acheulean stone tool technique. H. Erectus, maybe the earliest hunters, learned the art of producing fire and was the first hominid to leave Africa, colonizing most of Afro-Eurasia and possibly giving rise to Homo floriensis in the process. Although some recent writers have claimed that Homo georgicus was the first and most basic hominid to dwell outside of Africa, many experts believe that H. Georgicus was a rudimentary member of the Homo erectus group. Biface item, spear point, from Africa, dating to the late Stone Age. Homo sapiens, also called as modern humans or anatomically modern humans, 
was alive in Africa some 350, 000 260, 000 years ago. According to the fossil record, the Jebel Irhoud bones from Morocco, ca. 315, 000 years ago, the Floresbed skull from South Africa, ca. 259, 000 years ago, and the Omo remains from Ethiopia, are among the earliest known Homo sapiens fossils, ca. 195, 000 years ago, scientists believe that Homo sapiens arose between 350, 000 and 260, 000 years ago as a result of the fusion of East African and South African populations. Archaeological finds reaching back over 100, 000 years have been uncovered in Central Africa. Extensive walled fortifications and communities dating from the first millennium BC have recently been discovered in Xylem, Chad, around 60 kilometers, 37 miles, southwest of Lake Chad. The early civilizations of Saw, Kanem, Bornu, Shilak, Bagurmi, and Wadai were supported by trade and improved agricultural skills resulting in increasingly advanced communities. Bantu migrants arrived in Central Africa's Great Lakes region around 1.000 BC. The Bantu had also colonized as far south as what is now Angola by the middle of the first millennium BC. Following the dryness of the Sahara, settlements shifted to the Nile Valley, where a slew of sacral chiefdoms arose, the Nile Delta region of Lower Egypt, Upper Egypt, and the second and third cataracts of the Niles Dongola Reach in Nubia were the areas with the most population pressure. The cultivation of Southwest Asian cereals such as wheat and barley, as well as the raising of sheep, goats, and cattle, contributed to this population pressure and increase. As the world's population grows, so does the demand for farmland, necessitating agricultural regulation. The establishment of bureaucracies among sacral chiefdoms established regulation. Tasseti, the first and most powerful chiefdom, was established circa 3, 500 BC. The concept of sacral chiefdom became popular in Upper and Lower Egypt. Egypt. Libyans were the Egyptians' term for the people west of the Nile, who were Berbers' ancestors. The Libyans, like the Maori of Morocco and the Numidians of central and eastern Algeria and Tunis, were farmers. They, like the Getchali, were nomadic horsemen who roamed the parched grasslands and deserts. Berber desert nomads and Berber coastal agriculturalists were frequently at odds. The Phoenicians were Mediterranean merchants who were always on the lookout for rich commodities including copper gold, tin, and lead, they began to establish communities along the North African coast, trading and mixing with the native Berber people. The city of Carthage was founded by Phoenicians from Tyre in 814 BC. Carthage had grown into a major trading entity and power in the Mediterranean by 600 BC. Owing largely to commerce with tropical Africa, the prosperity of Carthage aided the expansion of the Berber kingdoms of Numidia and Mauritania. Carthage gave a strong incentive for trade with sub-Saharan Africa around 500 BC, Berber intermediaries, who had maintained ties with sub-Saharan Africa after the desert had dried up, transported goods from oasis to oasis using pack animals. The Garamantes of Fez, who raided caravans, posed a threat. Gold, slaves, beads, and ivory were traded for salt and metal products. The Sa civilization lived in Central Africa from around the 6th century BC to the 16th century AD. The Sa were a people that resided south of Lake Chad, along the Shari River, in what is now Cameroon and Chad. They are the first people to leave clear indications of their presence in modern-day Cameroon's area. Several ethnic groups in northern Cameroon and southern Chad claim lineage from the Saw civilization, particularly the Sara people. Artifacts from the Saw period reveal that they were expert bronze, copper, and iron artisans, bronze and terracotta figurines of human and animal characters, money, burial urns, household utensils, jewelry, finely adorned pottery, and spears are among the items discovered. The most significant saw archaeological discoveries have been made south of Lake Chad. By the 4th century CE, Bantu-speaking peoples who were iron-using agriculturists and herders had established themselves south of the Limpopo River, displacing and absorbing the original Khoisan speakers. They gradually went south, with the first ironworks in what is now KwaZulu-Natal province dating back to roughly 1050. The Kosa people, whose language incorporates certain linguistic elements from the ancient Khoisan people, reached the Great Fish River in today's eastern Cape province as the southernmost tribe. 
In contrast to the British North-South Axis, France sought to build a continuous West, East axis of the continent as part of the scramble for Africa. In Africa, tensions between Britain and France have reached a boiling point. War was a distinct possibility at various stages, but it never materialized. The Fashoda incident of 1898 was the most serious incident. When French troops attempted to occupy territory in southern Sudan, they were met by a far more formidable British army ostensibly acting in the interests of Egypt's Khedive. The French retreated under duress, ceding control of the area to the British, and deal between the two governments acknowledged the status quo, accepting British rule over Egypt while France became the dominant force in Morocco, but France was humiliated overall. In the 1890s, the first historical studies in English debuted, and they took one of four approaches. One, typically, the territorial narrative was produced by an experienced military or government official who placed a strong focus on what he had witnessed. Two, the apologia pieces were written to defend British policies. Three, popularizers attempted to reach a big number of people. Four, compendia appears to be created with the intention of combining academic and government qualifications. Professional research first developed around 1900, and it focused on the study of corporate operations, sometimes employing unpublished government documents and archives. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.